Hey everyone, welcome back to another daily recap. Today is a huge day because I took three trades for the first time in one day, and also I took them all simultaneously, so I was taking them all at the same time. I was in all three positions at the same time, and it was uh, it was good. It, it really turned out well. Uh, so let me dive right into all the trades. Um, but first, I do have to say this video is not backed by my investing club. I'm just a member making these daily recaps to hopefully help you and also help me. Uh, just by reviewing my old recaps, seeing how I improved over time and became profitable. I'm not profitable yet, but I think I'm getting there and these videos will be really good to keep track of and how I did it. So hopping right into it, we have JFIN, alright? This is a, well, I don't, this isn't really a low hanging fruit, mainly because the stock looks intact. But my strategy with low hanging fruit or day two plays are if they are below the pivot point, and the red to green line it is a short and so especially this one because we were very close to uh the red to green line which means i can get the best risk reward because my stop is over red to green um uh, this one my stop was a little wide compared to normal so i got a little bit less size than i should have but a lot of the time my stop is only 10 cents from red to green so i guess this isn't too far but it is a little bit farther than normal so my red my stop is always above red to green uh, usually it's a lot tighter, which allows me to get really good risk reward if it does work. And this one worked out very well. Um, so pre-market, we kind of just, that's the problem with these. They have very low liquidity. And so you got to be careful. These things can be pumped pre-market really quickly, but it's day two and it's high probability. So as long as you stay safe and cut as soon as a lot of volume comes in, you should be safe. Now, uh, pre-market, not much happened. But then, you know, this is what happens most of the time with these ideal setups. Uh, they tank right out of the open. Uh, in this one, we had a really nice take. I accidentally shorted 10 extra shares. So I got 25 shares here, and then I got 10 extra shares here. I did not mean to short, but hey, it worked out, right? Um, actually, I don't know if it worked out because since I was originally going to cover 10 shares here, and then 15 shares here, but since I shorted 10 here, I was like, oh shoot, let me just cover that. So I covered 20 here, and then I covered 10 right here. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so yeah, that was a really good trade. Uh, I could have always. I can always do better scaling out, but I, I've told myself today that you can't be perfect. You can't always catch the bottom. Uh, for Annex, Annex for example, uh, this is the other trade. Very similar. Uh, this one's more of a low-hanging fruit, so I wanted to scale even more on this one. So I wanted to scale all the way up to 520 because this one was a good low hanging fruit. It had a tight range and there was clear, clear stop out area. Again, on both of these setups, if I had just lowered my risk to like I had it normally, uh, right above red to green, I would have gotten a lot more size. A sp like on both these combined, I probably would have got, I probably would have doubled, maybe even tripled my my profits today. But I decided to go with a wider stop. Because if this did pop and rejected 520, I could definitely see that happening and then we fall. The problem is when we get over red to green, I feel like you should probably be covering when we come back down to red to green because uh, a lot of the time it just holds it and runs more. Um, and so once you're below red to green, that's where it stays down and it hopefully like fades and drops more. But once you're over red to green, it's kind of like, I feel like it's going to hold it, and so I should nail and bail. So nail and bail over red to green, uh, you can let it work under red to green. That's kind of like what I'm thinking. So I need to have my stop closer to red to green on these, because I'll either get cut out for a small loss, or win on massive wins. Uh, versus right here, where, you know, I don't have very good, I mean, I don't have very good risk reward. It's, just, it's as simple as that. Um, but yeah, this one worked out too. And so this one, um, I was playing basically the same as Jathan, uh, but I was a little more patient on this one, and that is because it didn't tank that much really quickly. So I covered out about half right here. Uh, and also, the goal is to short red to green and cover around SSR. That's the, that's where the meat of the move is, and that's where you make your money. And so on here, I was wanting to scale out a little more, hoping it fell more maybe after this bounce and rejected. But we lose volume, and the stock doesn't move very much. You're going to have to wait a while. Um, my stop was at 490. Okay, so if I, if I, my, that was my stop on my second uh, shares. So I covered half shares, and then I was holding 50% left. And I set my stop at 490, okay? 
And then I decided, okay, because I have to leave at uh, 10 o'clock for school. And so I was like, you know what, let me just cover right here. Uh, it looks like it worked out and I would not have gotten stuffed out and I would have gotten way better covers down here, probably would have covered around here. But again, I, I'm not gonna, I could have set a range order, but again, with the low liquidity, it's kind of scary. So these were the two low hanging fruit trades. Um, I actually took a long trade today, okay? Let me go over that. So GSMG was the play, all right? So this one had a massive, massive run-up. Uh, probably not massive compared to some other runners today, but this one was a day one gapper. Uh, we kind of hold under view up. I've seen this a ton of times. We hold under view up. We reclaim. We trap the shorts, and we go on a run. Okay, so this is what happened here. I did not enter anywhere in this area, which would have been like so. You know, right here, you're thinking, okay, it might be a broken suck. Right here, bam, new higher low higher low this is probably the ideal entry anywhere right here with a really tight risk that's the beauty of longing i think my rule with long is going to be only longing things where i will get three to one risk reward all right so we have this can have a really tight stop probably at 215 but again the problem was i could not long this because i was setting up my e-trade with pre-market trading uh and then i finally got that available and so we had this higher low here and I tried getting in here, but you know, I had more technical issues. And then finally I figured it all out. I set my stop at 220 because I don't want it to break this low, uh, which the risk reward was not as good now. Uh, again, I'm risking this chunk versus if I had entered here, I could have risked a smaller, a smaller amount to make even more because you're entering lower. Um, but I had two ads here. Uh, the first ad was on a bounce on view up, pretty much bottom tick that one. Uh, we come back, back, back. We're kind of just hovering on view up, which is fine by me. But then we come to make the push, all right? You see the little volume here. We come to push and we just sell. Like every pop we're being sold into. And so I just decided, you know what? <clears throat> I need to focus on my short positions because we we're getting close to market open. So I sold for a five cent gain. And since I had a tight stop, uh, I was able to get, you know, 51 shares with risking a very small amount. And so this was a nice um, 5 cent a share gain. So I had 51 shares. Uh, you know, that was a nice $2.50 cent gain. But again, imagine that size step. Don't focus on the P&L, but the chart I added to my winner here. Uh, you know, I think I was, I, I was going to adjust my stop if I didn't decide to sell here. But I did sell and kind of timed it perfectly. Um, and... Honestly, I need to work on getting better entries. Again, now I won't have technical difficulties, but I need to get a better entry so that I can be more patient. Because if I entered right here, I would have let the trade work. And there, this trade had a good, a good chance at working out. But a lot of other stocks were taking attention, all right? And that's why um, I think it failed. Otherwise, this one looks perfect to have uh, got it. But this is what happens when we're testing uh, and it kind of just took all the volume in our x piece and then you know that one was crazy oh another setup that i missed out on uh was adtx all right i was watching this low hanging fruit all right we break through red and that's where i really like it uh this is 4 a.m so i'm not even awake at this point but when we get to this point we're kind of hovering it so i was watching this but i decided to take jfin and annex instead of this which sucks because Look, I think it had an offering and it was massive. That would have been crazy. Um, and I would have shorted around this $3 mark when we bounced back to view up. Or I would have shorted anywhere in this area. Uh, but yeah, as long as it's within 10 cents of red to green, I think any short is pretty good on these setups. I think that was all the whole day. Um, you know, the market is definitely different now. The market is hot, okay? Longs are favored in this market now. So we need to, stock selection is key for both long and short, but long it's a lot easier. You just focus on the stocks that are going crazy. Um, but for short, you need to focus on, on the stocks that have literally no attention. Um, you know, so let's see. Oh, right. Okay, so this is another stock I was watching, KXIN. See, there's a lot to talk about. These daily recaps are getting a little longer than normal, and that's because the market is hot. So KXIN, we had a massive run-up. Uh, I don't know about massive, it was 50 cents. But it was a, a big run-up, and then we kind of break down, we're kind of fading. So it's like, okay, this is a very nice-looking VWAP uh, reject short. 
if we tank at the open. So off the open, we did have a little dip and then we started bouncing, but we never got to view up, so that's a bummer. But if we did, it would have worked very well. Especially, this is good, because all the other crazy socks, they're taking the attention. So when this one's popping a view up, I don't know, no one should really care about it. Probably no one's looking at it. And there's a lot of longs track pre-market, and so it's a high probability setup. Um, but yeah, that was everything today that I saw from the market. Um, let me know how we, what do you think about this market down in the comments. It's crazy. Uh, let me know if you're long biased or short biased and how you're doing in this market. I'm really interested. Uh, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you did enjoy. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace.